My name is Taryn Packer, and I'm a Certified Simulation Support Specialist here at Go Engineer. Today I want to talk to you about how to make a stress-strain curve in SOLIDWORKS Nonlinear Simulation, as well as how to avoid some common mistakes when making stress-strain curves. So as you can see, I've already set up a nonlinear analysis here. I'm going to click on that tab, and I have my simulation set up over here. To get to a stress strain curve property manager, you need to right click on your part file in your simulation tree and click edit material for your part file. Now I need to go to a custom material folder. So I've got this alloy steel custom material and everything's editable in your custom materials folder. There's a bunch of different material model types here, but there's only three that actually use stress strain curves. There's nonlinear elastic, plasticity von Mises, and plasticity Tresca. I'm just gonna click on plasticity von Mises. As you can see, this button comes up. There are actually two ways to get to the stress strain curve, the fast way and the slow way. This button is actually the fast way, so I'm gonna click on that button and it goes straight to the stress strain curve. Now if I go back to the properties tab, and this is the slow way. So I'm in my material properties here. I go to tables and curves, click on this down arrow for under the type box. At the very bottom is a stress strain curve option. And now I'm back in my stress strain curve command manager. In the stress strain curve, there are two columns here. To make this table. The first column is for strain, and it's a unitless number. The second column is for stress, and it has four units that you can choose from. There's pascals, pounds per square inch, kilograms of force per centimeter squared, and megapascals. So I'm just going to choose pascals for now, and again there's two ways to input data so that I can get my stress strain curve up here in the preview window. The first way is manually, just typing in the data one data point at a time, and each row is a data point. So if I want another row here, all I need to do is double click on the row on the last row that I currently have. Then I'm gonna double click again, double click again. So now I've got four rows that I can put input data here. I'm just gonna do this manually real quickly. So as you can see, every single time I put in a new row with stress and strain, a stress strain curve shows up here in the preview window. I can get a larger version of this if I want to click the view button, and I'm going to bring over the graph that it makes, and I can make this much bigger, and then I can really see what's happening on, on the stress and the strain values. But that's only three data points. Usually you'll have much, much more. So if I don't want to go through and put every data point in manually, I can go to an Excel sheet if I've got all the raw data for my stress strain curve in an Excel sheet, then all I need to do is copy this, come back to my chart here. I'm going to delete everything that I've already made. And then I just click on the very first cell and I can press Control V and paste it right in there. So now I've got 16 data points. You can see the preview window show up here. And again, you can get a larger version of that preview window here get all 16 data points. So that's how you put in a stress strain curve in SOLIDWORKS nonlinear simulation. There are some mistakes that you want to look out for when you're doing stress strain curves, two of them specifically. The first one has to do with this very first data point. A lot of new people to SOLIDWORKS nonlinear simulation think this data point should be the very beginning of the stress strain curve, or in other words, a row of zero strain, zero stress. But that's not the case. The zero, zero starts the beginning of the elastic region. What this strain curve is, is actually the entire plastic region. So this very first data point needs to be the yielding point of whatever material you're using. And then all the material data points after that are all the data points in the plastic region of that same material for the program to use. Because the program uses the elastic modulus, to figure out the elastic region of the stress strain curve. So it doesn't need that. You've already input that in your data. It just needs the plastic region. So this first data point here is always the yield point. So now the second mistake that happens with nonlinear simulation has to do with inputting the data. One of the great things about SOLIDWORKS simulation is it does automatic conversions to the units that it has set up here. So I can convert from pascals to pounds per square inch to megapascals just like that. 
the problem happens is when I'm in one unit and I think I'm putting data in another unit, then that conversion option in SOLIDWORKS simulation becomes a problem. So let's say I've only got four data points in my stress strain curve. So I'm going to delete all those data points. And let's say I think I'm putting these data points in as megapascal here, but really I'm still in Pascal. So I'm just going to take off some of these numbers, take off the last six to make these megapascal numbers. Okay. So let's say I think I'm inputting these as 620 megapascals to 675 megapascals. My preview window looks like that. But then I notice, oh, I'm still actually in pascals. So then I go to megapascals, and I wanted 620. I got this much, much smaller number. So that's something you need to pay attention to. Always make sure you're in the correct units for whatever units you're inputting, and that will make your job a lot easier because then if I did this incorrectly, I would have to come back in and input this data correctly. I would have to get rid of these zeros. And now it's actually good. Now if I go back to Pascal's, this is what I was actually looking for. This has been Taryn Packer at Go Engineer. I hope you've learned something from this video. Mm -hmm.